All right, everyone, welcome back into another fantasy golf video. Going to be getting into the lineup builder video here for you guys, touching on the ownership, uh, giving you guys some fades, some ownership leverage talk, and then getting into my lineup process for both the RBC Heritage and also the Corrales Putacana Championship. Let's start out with the ownership, though, for the RBC Heritage. And so I do want to start off with saying that this ownership is probably going to update a little bit more as the week progresses. I'm doing this video on Tuesday night. So we still have a full Wednesday for, uh, you know, ownerships to come in and change. And it is a no cut event, only a 70 man field event. We have seen some big changes that occur really on Wednesday compared to what it was looking like on Wednesday evening, Tuesday evening. So I just want to make that clear. So this stuff could change. Now, I do think that the players are chalk right now are going to stay chalk, but maybe, you know, some slight changes happen. Like for one, for instance here, like Tommy Fleetwood compared to like Max Homa this week. Yes, Tommy Fleetwood, I would agree, is the better play on paper this week, but is he double the ownership of Max Homa? Probably not. And so like, this is actually how I am going about using this tool this week uh, with it being a no cut event with the ownerships pretty much being spread out. Now, yes, we're going to see Scotty project to be heavily owned. Um, it's weird. I'm getting different ownerships for Scotty. One spot I was seeing him like 28% owned. The rest of them are saying, yeah, he's just going to be extreme shock. People are still paying up for him. And I'm kind of mad. Like, I really wish that he was like at least 15K, <laughs> which sounds crazy to say. But then, then we would have to think about it. Then we like then he becomes difficult to play. But right now, you could easily fit in Scotty and Xander and have a pretty good build going. Uh, or Scotty and let's say Cameron Young, who I'm pretty on, like you could still get there as well. Uh, but yeah, looking at this guy's like, yes, Wyndham Clark is definitely an ownership leverage play, especially compared to the players around him and whatnot. Like that, that's that's a big spot where we can gain some leverage on the field. And then looking at like some like Corey Connors, yeah, on paper he projects really well. He is someone that you could be more overweight on the field. But like you're probably not going crazy with that. Maybe like 20% Wyndham Clark, maybe 20 to 25% for Corey Connors just because he's a little bit too cheap. Like you can still be overweight on the field, but you're not going crazy with it. And so I don't really think we need to look at it in the sense of which golfers are overown. Now, yes, maybe Tom Hoagie is a little bit overown, but if you're just eating the chalk on someone like Scotty Scheffler, well, then you are getting to a lot of these lower price plays. So to me, that stuff all makes sense. And so again, the way I'm looking at ownership this week is I might like do this, just go down the list here. Okay. Colin Moore, Kyle is 14% owned. What is the likelihood for him to outproduce Tommy Fleetwood? Because for Tommy Fleetwood at his current ownership, he has to finish top five. Okay. And if you look at it, Vegas actually thinks he's more overrun compared to the nine to five data. That's what this is telling us. So worth calling out. I don't think we need to go too crazy with that. So what I want to do is I want to get into the nine to five custom model here for you guys. And I don't think we need to go crazy with like doing any sort of custom model this week. I always tell people just stick to what the line of builders already naturally trying to do. Uh, but this is a week in which I do want to get some kind of unique lineups. And that's how I have the custom model design for you guys. It's already curated and everything for you. So you don't have to do the work. Uh, so like when I say that, what I want to do is I want to do studs and duds. And so I'm just going to type in studs and duds only this is going to put a heavy emphasis on the studs and duds approach golfers that are ranked high and golfers that are ranked low now why do we want to do that well i touch on that a lot in the nine to five write-up this week if you guys haven't uh signed up for email notifications to get access to that write-up go to the bottom of the website and just enter your email in here and then click join that'll give you guys the email notification of when this write-up is made available uh to you guys now i might have some spelling errors typically i, I write it I don't have time to proofread it because it takes me two three hours to write and then i, I just got other stuff going on want to get more content out to you guys but anyways uh the point that i'm trying to make is that like this week is definitely a studs and duds approach like i know we don't like to do it but that is just what we have seen with these no cut events is that the players that finish top five top 10 are more crucial to nail than trying to figure out golfers in the mid-tier value range and whatnot so this is my player pool really how i'm looking at it this way is i'm targeting the quarter plays and then i'm targeting these lower exposure plays at the same time i do still want to get some exposure to some of these other golfers as well like not going too crazy with but for this example that's what we are doing we are going heavy studs and duds so you know, let's say we do this, what you can do, export this, you click that, it's going to download into a CSV file, and then you upload the CSV right here, and then click save. And so that's going to put a very heavy emphasis on studs and duds, as you guys can see here, like very heavy on studs. And this is basically golfers that are over 9k. Now, I do still like Cameron Young. So what I'm personally going to do is I'm going to bump his projection up as well, probably to like around 120, because I'm telling the data, I still want to be on Cameron Young. But other than that, that's the biggest manual update I'm going to do. And then we scroll down, we're also going to see this, the duds in there as well. 
well because it shouldn't exactly matter too much what these golfers in this range do for the most part now yes there's gonna be one-off situations but the likelihood of you getting that right compared to getting like a top end golfer right is not as great and so just don't mess around with those nuances just go for the best builds we can make possible so what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this three unique players 30 percent max exposure maybe 35 don't need doesn't need to be anything too crazy and what and another thing that i did for this is i did set the salary to have at least 700 or more or sorry or less left over i don't want this to be too crazy studs and does where we're having a thousand dollars left over and whatnot and so this is what it looks like currently now i do want to point out that did only give us about 15 percent scotty scheffler so what i want to do is i'm going to go back into the players and i'm just going to lock scotty in to that 35 percent max exposure uh if we want to be overweight on the field what we could do let's say we want 45 percent scotty to be overweight on the field we can uh then we're going to be good to go so we locked him into around 45 percent of our builds now obviously that's going to decrease some of the other stud plays that we're on but we should be good to go and i want to call out that this is still putting an emphasis on the nine to five data when we're doing this again this is already curated for you guys to the point where you don't need to do more work you just choose which slight data difference you want to make and like i said i wanted to make the studs and duds slight difference so that's what i put in here and so now you guys will see 45 percent max exposure to sky scheffler now i do want to call it like pavan maybe too high there tom hoagie kirk Kadiyama. like all those golfers maybe too high we could maybe just do around you know 25 percent max exposure for those guys maybe 30 percent max exposure for those guys but because we locked in scotty we only got 20 percent of xander so i might knock that down to 40 for scotty to still be slightly overweight on the field but at least we're still getting our exposure to obear and then also cameron young so that's just an example of how i'm going about attacking the rbc heritage i feel like that's a very good way to go about doing that but probably only gonna do about 75 half of my lineups that way then the other half i'll do it more of a standard way uh and the way i'll go about doing that is i'll do a player group like this where i'm selecting scotty Xander, Obear, and Cameron Young, those core plays that I mentioned in the nine to five write-up, I want those plays. And what I could do a step further then is I could I could do this rule four times that I'm about to show you guys. When a lineup includes, so we're gonna save that one. When a lineup includes Scotty Scheffler, I want at least one of Webb, because he's a value play that I don't mind. D Tree, another value play I don't mind, don't love. But then we're gonna go with Glover a play that I do really like and then also uh Austin Eckroat and then also Andrew Putnam save and so we would do that four times then with the other core plays so basically you're telling it I want all my lineups with at least one of these golfers right here and then when they include that I want at least one of these value plays in there because again those are the value plays that I think have the best chance of having a good week so just as an example I ran 20 to show you guys that so lineups that include Scotty well we're gonna see we got Lucas Glover right there Glover again Eckroat Eckroat, Glover, Putnam. So you guys are seeing that that rule is working. Again, we would go ahead and do that three more times with those other core plays or whoever you guys see. If you guys see it a little bit different, by all means, go for that. But now I do want to jump into the Corrales Putacana Championship as well, giving you guys that data breakdown as well. So let's go ahead and jump into that. And I'm not going to put that much time into this. I know we don't have that many people that uh, care about the Corrales. Unfortunately, mostly due to DraftKings not giving us proper sizes for the contest. But looking at it, guys, it's pretty... Uh, simple who we're going to be on alex norn's going to be one of them nate lashley kevin Yu, sam stevens mark hubbard ben martin those are all going to be core plays that we're going out of our way to target i like aaron rye as well you know this is a tournament that you should play fine at davis thompson's going to be an easy play to get to ben griffin victor perez those are all good plays chan kim's really popping up justin lauer uh, you got gary kigo who's popping up a decent amount as well he's going to be someone that's trending up on a lot in your builds alex fitzpatrick decent player uh peter quest decent play uh I i'm really shocked at the pricing though to be honest with you guys for the corrales and i realized i messed this up take away one of the c's here there we go um because we got like Lanto Griffin, who's a decent play on paper right there. Rico Hoy. I don't know if that's how you say his name, but we're going with it. Tyson Alexander's randomly popping up in there. Um, it's just strange. Very strange. The pricing that we're getting guys. Like if we go lower, Scott Pierce, he's someone that's kind of a decent looking option. Jonathan Beard typically plays these events extremely well. Missed the cut at the most recent one though. So maybe, maybe we have to knock him a little bit. Sean O'Hare is someone that typically makes the cut at these events. Same thing with Austin Cook. You know, those are golfers that typically make the cut at these type of events so i don't really get why we're getting the pricing for those guys the way that we are russell knox is someone that kind of 
you know, one of the best staff hits in the field, really. 41st best pick in the 9-5 model at 5.4. A play that I like a decent amount as well is going to be Hayden Springer, you know, who has shown some upside, pretty decent staff hit as well. So, I don't know. We're just getting a lot of, like, saw price, and I really wish the contests were much bigger for this tournament because it's 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 egregious, some of the price and mistakes that are out there. But let's go ahead and jump into the lineup builder to show you guys uh, kind of what that's spinning out to us, and then I'll be getting out of here. And so, looking at, we're just going to go to the Corrales, and we already know we're going to be on Alex Norm a decent amount but let's see if which value plays maybe we don't need to be on too crazy with i don't know let's just go with like 25 25 20 20 20 like we don't need to go crazy with this but we do know we want to be on those plays right uh and then settings i'm going to do the same thing i always do 3 35 we're good to go generate just to give you guys an example of what we're pulling in for the corrales i uh, give you guys a good sense of really how easy it is to make a good build and it really is i mean this is crazy huge pricing mistakes i don't really get it to the point where it's almost too easy to attack this event that's what makes it difficult <laughs> you know some weeks we're able to get so dialed in on what the correct plays are whereas this week with the price and it's so bad they like what do you do like who do you play because there's there's so many mispriced golfers and it doesn't make sense to me but that's gonna be all hopefully you guys enjoyed the coverage if you did you know what to do give that like and subscribe to the channel that is a good way to support the channel as well if you guys want access to the tools that you saw in this video head on over to 95sports.com like i mentioned i really try to curate all the tools available on the website to you guys it, the fantasy cough community is set up in a way that's designed to make it more difficult to you guys to almost make it like misleading uh, I don't know. It, it's just set up in such a weird way. Some, most of the tools that are out there. I really want to dial it in, curate as much as possible, have it do the work for you. If you guys want to ask us that, available for $10 a month, 10 or 95sports.com. Thanks for watching. And as always, let's keep cashing.